This program is partially supported by a grant from the Illinois Arts Council Agency, a state agency, the National Endowment for the Arts. by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Becky Cramblett. Welcome to this edition of State of the Arts. For a community the size of Jacksonville, there's a whole lot of art going on. Today's program features two Jacksonville artists. One of these artists is someone who followed her dream and recently opened her own art studio. The other is an artist who followed the yellow brick road wherever it led him and ended up a freelance designer. Our program begins today with Allison Pratt, owner of 29 Gallery and Studio, recently opened on the square in Jacksonville. According to Allison, her decision to open a gallery was made after many years of creating art in her home. The pieces seemed to fall into place when her husband helped her with a business plan and a photographer friend who previously had a studio in the space decided to move. She feels she is blessed with a talent and wishes to share it with the Jacksonville community. Um, I guess you'd say my purpose for, for doing this um, and, and a goal is to bring art education to Jacksonville um, for all ages, you know, ages 3 to 103. Uh, to bring in two purposes, if I backtrack, but two purposes, to curate a gallery, fine art gallery, and also to teach uh, art classes, like I said, for ages three to, to adults. Um, for kids, for adults that may have a little bit of an intimidation of art, always been curious for art, and to bring in other artists to teach classes other than myself. Or that's, that's another kind of purpose of mine is to draw in artists, different types of artwork from all over. I have several friends international, all over the United States and, and international that I'm hoping one day to bring in and, and we rotate artists every 60 days. So there's always going to be something new and different here at 29. How do you find the artists? Uh, from, I'm part of an international abstract group um, online. I started a blog about seven years ago and through that I have met phenomenal artists um, from Colorado, Arizona, um, another friend of mine from Florida and from that, you just, it's all about networking. Kind of like anything you know, that we do um, today, it's, it's all who you know and the different groups that you belong to. So when you have a lot of friends that do this as well, you can reach out to them. And everyone currently right now that is hanging here is a friend of mine and, and I owe them a lot of thanks for helping me to get this going. And you're right down here on the square mm -hmm. on Jackson, in Jacksonville, right. and quite often there are art-related events, is that right, that just happen on the sidewalk? Absolutely. The first Friday of every month, the uh, Jacksonville Imagine Arts Foundation um, is a nonprofit organization, and several years ago they started a first Friday gallery hop, downtown gallery hop. Um, I think in the beginning there were six, seven, eight uh, different places on the square and possibly even more that would curate, um, being from restaurants to the bookstores to Lincoln Land Community College just on the north side of the square across from me here and a couple other galleries. And they started curating different artists. The Imagine Foundation put that on and provided the art. They curated and found the artists. And so it's still going. It's a, it's a Fabulous thing for Jacksonville. Allison's own work has continued to evolve. A graduate of the University of Missouri at Columbia with a major in graphic art and a minor in photography, she had never painted abstract until about seven years ago. Now she feels it's her calling to paint and teach abstract art. What, what is your inspiration? You know, color. Um, and that's really, that's all I can tell anybody is color and movement and emotion. I am, I'm not one of those artists that paints when I'm feeling that certain emotion, but it's kind of after the fact that I kind of go back and reflect on how I was feeling or, um, and, and honestly, I don't even know what I'm doing prior to painting. Sometimes I know the color scheme I'm gonna use, the palette I will use, but I just, I, I pick my colors, I go with the movement, I kind of let my brush, my palette knife take me to what I'm gonna do. Do you find that people see what you saw when you created it? Sometimes, you know, abstract is um, definitely, uh, it, it's hard, I think, for some people to, to get abstract. Uh, a lot of people have to see, they want to see something. They want to see a landscape. They want to see flowers. They want to see people. Uh, in my work, and I always say when people are you know, standing and, and admiring it or looking at it, you're not always going to see something. It, but sometimes they do. And I think, and to me, that's fascinating as the artist mm -hmm. to have you know, 10 people line up and see what they come up with. But it's more the movement. It's more you can see. I have a lot of texture to my work that mm -hmm. I that I've in the last two years incorporated, and you can kind of feel that. I, when, when it's dry, I encourage people to 
maybe touch it, you know, just to feel where my brush went, where my palette knife went. And you can kind of feel that emotion, I think, coming from me then. What other elements have you discovered uh, to use to accomplish texture? The different mediums I, I tend to use. Uh, we talked earlier when I, I use drywall mud. Mm -hmm. Drywall mud meaning when you have a hole in the wall and what your contractor brings in, that big bucket of, of the paste and mud. And I have found that that builds the layers instead of using a lot of paint like I used to do. And uh, like I said, they got kind of expensive. So you have to just kind of play around with different things. Um, I've used sand, I've used corn silk, uh, rocks, pebbles, you name it. You can duct put tape? It. Duct tape, <laughs> yes, I, I have used duct tape. It makes just amazing lines, awesome lines <laughs> that um, stand off when you want you know, the verticals, the horizontal lines um, to kind of give a horizon look, such as the piece standing uh, that's here behind me. Um, but it's, you know, it's kind of fun to do that stuff. When, when you do sit down to create something mm -hmm. and, and you say that you want people to see what you see, do you see a concrete image in your head that you then turn into an abstract piece of art? You know, not necessarily. It's, um, I, I, I don't know if uh, there's a lot of artists that think like I do. Um, we're all kind of a little bit, you know, we're kind of <laughs> in our own world. Um, and the way I see things is so different. I just, I know kind of the textures I want to use. I know. Um, maybe a little bit of background of, you know, do I want to use circles, do I want to use lines, though, and to kind of go from there. And like I said, I just, I crank the music up, and I go with what music I'm listening to, and back and forth. And I mean, it's anything, you know, Nora Jones, Janis Joplin, I mean, I love all kinds of music, jazz and blues, and I kind of go with that, because sometimes it's like writer's block. Mm -hmm. um, artists get that too. I mean, sure. I, you know, I, I guess I call it an artist block, and it's, we get frustrated, and I do get frustrated, and so you do have to walk away from your piece sometimes because I want something to come through. It's, it's a creative block more than anything. What uh, direction do you see your gallery going in the next few years? Well, I sure hope to keep it. You know, I, I <laughs> sure hope to keep this thing going. Yeah. Um, I just I want it to grow. My classes right now are doing really well um, for only being, this is our second month. We opened June 1st. And I've had a, you know, great feedback from people and, and the community, um, very supportive of it. I'm really hoping the classes will evolve more. I'm mm -hmm. hoping to get a little more interest in, in the ages two, three, four, and five year olds um, because there, there's n not a lot right now for three year olds. I have a three year old, and it, it, we have music classes and, and some art classes, but for them to do different types of things. Um, I would love more for the adults to get over their intimidation, their fear, or um, it's not a negativity, but I think it is more of an intimidation to, sure. to do things now as an adult because we're so busy. Um, I would like the community to, um, and I keep saying the community, but it is the community, to take a break. Take a break from that job. Take a break from your busy schedule. Children and adults get stressed, as busy as we are now. And it's fun to come in, bring your girlfriends in, have a girl night, and you know, bring in your own bottle of wine and just relax. So you think you can teach any adult to create a piece of art? I would like to think I could. I think it's always great to have a student come in, an adult in different ages to come in and bring that inner child out with them. Um, so it's always a challenge to do that, but I think to go back in time and to bring forth that inner child, things that we remember as a child, finger painting. Always start with finger painting, but to draw. I, I can teach people how to draw, um, starting out with a lot of abstract because I think that's probably what we did as a child to draw sure. lines and, and the color and the color theory, to bring that back, and it sometimes brings forth that creative energy in you. Okay, well, I'm gonna give Allison her biggest, probably creative challenge of her life. Absolutely. I'm a creative person, I really am, I'm creative. But I can't draw anything, so are you, are you up for this? I'm up for it, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, Allison, you're gonna do the impossible. You're gonna teach me how to create some art here, so. I picked a really good project. Um, I actually, I teach a class uh, later on this afternoon, and it's called Marker Mixed Media Doodle. Okay. Doodle, just like any of us that have sat there before, scribbled, doodled on our notepads in school, um, or as you're sitting and talking on the phone, um, it, it's kind of like that, but it adds you know, a little more color theory to it, um, a little more thought press, process behind it, um, kind of get you to think, and it's a good problem solving when I teach all ages. This one actually today is a mixed age group. Um, okay. So it's, it's kind of cool because I do have an adult class doing this and, and to teach that problem solving and to kind of just let your mind wander a little bit. Mm -hmm. So well, we, uh, yeah. well, we start out the paper and the markers. Um, okay. The way I teach this class, you always choose one color to, to draw your lines. Okay. Um, and it, to keep that solid color going. We choose anywhere from three to four colors, um, as I already have. 
that we will then use to do, you know, to color in the shapes that we create by by our doodles okay. and kind of abstract. So I'm going to pick a dark color to do mm -hmm. my doodles. Yeah, I mean, you can you can really do anything, but I, I always choose the dark because it makes all the other colors stand out. Okay. Um, right. And you kind of just start, and we've used, we recycle and use all kinds of stuff. So we've, you know, we have clear caps that we have taken to um, to do circles, perfect circles. Mm -hmm. Um, you always start, you don't have to start in a corner, you can start really any on any edge. Okay. And the way I, you know, I started, kind of got it going here for us, but you can start on the edge, just wherever your hand wants to take you and make curved lines. When I go off the page, I think, you know, if I were to continue that and come back around, where would that, where would it come back around? Okay, so that's what you think. That's what I, that's, that's <laughs> what the artist brain thinks today. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll see what, let's see what I think. Okay. So we'll we'll kind of do that. Sure. Okay. And just just any any number of those. Any so. yeah any pattern and you, the, you know you know think about it the more uh, the more spaces and uh, that you would create the more you're going to have to color in so the longer it will probably take you uh, when you get finished with your lines. It can be as simple it can be as complex as what your brain thinks and you can take these and we've taken and used straight edge. Personally, I like the flow of a curved line sometimes a little bit better. Oh, I just did a straight line. Did I screw it up? No, you didn't. No, it's fine. <laughs> That's fine. I, you know, sometimes we have to go there. Okay. Know? All right. But you can always intersect and you can take something like this. If, I don't know if oh, you want right, to try. Right, right. Circles. You can, you can yeah. I mean, circles are always kind of fun. You can take the yeah. bigger ones. Um, sometimes I pull it off where it might come off the, the edge. Oh, okay. I have That's like this. That's very artsy, isn't it? Yes. Here. Yeah. yeah. I got to do artsy stuff here. Teaching the adult who can't draw to... Traces. Hey, tracing. <laughs> there's no cheating. There's no, you know, there's no wrong art. Honestly, right. it's, it's, art is very interesting. It just, it, it ends in very interesting places. Yeah. Um, sometimes I think my work isn't finished, but I have to just make myself stop. So you well, can, that's where I am. I'm like, okay. Well, and then that's fine. And you know, you have your symmetry and you have your asymmetry. So right now you kind of have an asymmetrical look going on where it's a little bit weighted on one side. Mine's a little bit bottom heavy. The, th the cool thing about the abstract doodle is you can turn it any way you want, and you kind of just, if you don't like it in, you know, up and down like that, you can turn, turn however you wish. Okay, so what if I do something like that? Oh, does that just screw the whole thing up? No, not really. No, it doesn't. <laughs> you don't like it, I can tell. No I, no, I think it's fine, actually. You know, I think when, you do, when you do the straight lines, I'm kind of on the curvy kick right now, so that's kind of what I've, you know, been doing. But yeah. uh, a lot of times I've done them where I've taken the straight edge, and I've, I've created squares, and I've created the diamond shape. Mm. But um, something like that would be fine. You know? Okay. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do one more thing here. Yeah, see, so you're, you're wanting a little more of the symmetrical, you're wanting it all evened out. And, and sometimes it's kind of stepping outside the box to have <laughs> an asymmetrical. If you were to divide it in fourths, if you I kind of cut this almost a yeah. square, don't measure, because it's probably not perfect, but um, if you were to divide it in fourths on which, which half would be you know, the heavier side. And honestly, I like that, because I like, I like that divided. Oh, I did good. No, okay, now what do we do? Now, um, I've, you know, I've kind of chosen these colors um, for no particular reason other than that's kind of what called to me mm -hmm. today. Um, I always like, like the blue and orange. You have the, the complementary colors. You know, we, we do try to teach a little bit of color theory, your primary colors, your secondary colors. Um, and sometimes when I, do, when I teach the, the children, they're not having it and they just want to pick what they want to pick. <laughs> and you just, you just roll with it. You let them do that because there's, there's probably a reason and maybe that is just their right. favorite color. Um, and sometimes they don't want to do the four, they just want to do three. So I, I don't argue. I, I want the kids, the adults, to just go with what feels best for them at the time. Okay. Um, this so feels good to me. That, that's, yeah, I like that palette. That's good. Those are good colors. Okay. It's kind of springy, summery colors. Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, so take, always got to take the caps off. Got that. Yeah. Now I don't really know which ones are which, but um, I kind of started to already color this in. This is a very, I mean, this really is a simple project to get started, and it's kind of a appreciation of the abstract. Okay. Um, because I think a lot of kids, they come in and go, oh, I've done that in school. Well, they don't realize that they're really doing abstract art. Right. And it's just what they like. So, you know, you can start, you can, you can just start coloring in with the colors you choose. Sometimes I'll, I don't want my, okay. I'm using orange right now, and sometimes I don't want the orange right next to an orange. So I'll know right. I'm gonna come back in here and I'll kind of color that in a little bit. Got it. And I'll know where I'm gonna go from there. But like, I already like this that I wanna have. Do you have, color them all in? Some you can leave white. You will, yeah, you will color in pretty much the majority of it. I, I have okay. a few pieces that, you know, I like the, the contrast of all the color mm -hmm. with, with the white. With a little bit of white. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. you can do that. Um, I've actually framed some of my children's art and they've done this. This is a good project at home to do with them. It, especially when you're, it, 
trying to cook dinner and uh, <laughs> keep the peace in the house. Um, for here, it's good. If there's no children's educational programming on PBS. Absolutely. This Which, will do. Yes, and, and sometimes my kids will say they saw something on PBS, and we try to we try to do that. It's just kind of nice. Um, you know, there's there's all kinds of art, and I. I for me right now, it's, I don't know if it's just what I'm meant to do, but to teach the appreciation of abstract. Mm -hmm. um, just because it is it, it kind of, it's an outlet for creative mind. Um, a lot of people block that, and to do this, it, it's therapeutic. I think this, watercolors, all art is therapeutic. Um, but for me to do this and to just let my, my brain take me where I want to go, my hand to take me where I want to go to do this is... I think that abstract is probably the most frightening and intimidating part of art for most people because it's hard to understand. Yeah, but I mean, the, the phrase I get is, I don't get that, you know, right. and, and to get something, um, I, that's kind of hard for me because you don't really have to get it. You right. have to enjoy it. And it just is what it is to you, right? Absolutely. Art is very subjective. Um, you know, there's, there's some things that I don't understand, but it's one thing I do encourage students that walk through my gallery is to appreciate all kinds of art. Yeah. Um, they may not like it, they may not want it hanging in their bedroom or their house uh, or wherever, but to know that someone came up with that, someone took the time and the effort and, um, and they enjoyed what they did. Um, and it just, you know, art speaks to all kinds of people. You call that good. Sometimes artists set their course and hope that life will allow them to achieve their dreams. Other times, the course is already set and all you have to do is follow the plan where it leads. Such is the case for freelance designer Steve Varble, and this is his story. When I was a little kid, I loved to draw, like a lot of little kids. My mom claims that uh, one of her friends who was an art instructor actually thought she saw a glimmer of talent and maybe it should be encouraged. So <laughs> from that moment on, I, I got all the free magic markers and pencils I wanted. Awesome. But, um, but actually, back in junior high, uh, there was a style that started to emerge. Uh, my brother had actually got me some um, a set of really nice professional magic markers, and I wanted to use them in a really special way. And I um, started drawing uh, very complex cartoon drawings. You know, I used markers today, and mine didn't quite look like this, <laughs> I gotta tell you. <laughs> no, but they got very, it got very detailed, and uh, we just play with ideas, and just, started producing uh, wow. drawing after drawing, and these are just one of many. Yeah. Uh, Steve went on to college and studied architecture, then switched back to art. He had a professor say he wasn't a fine artist, but an illustrator. At that point, a light bulb went off in his head, but he didn't completely find his calling until he came back to Jacksonville. My brother, had, who lives in upstate New York, had seen a project which was a cartoon map of his city. Mm -hmm. So he encouraged me to draw a cartoon map similar in style to what I've been doing in junior high uh, of the city of Jacksonville. Right. And um, the result was um, this piece. Um, and it's very complex, but it was, what I did is you went around and talked to every business in town and see if they wanted to um, uh, have their business represented uh -huh. um, on the map. And I remember the time, because I was very naive, but it was, I was gonna charge them each $45. <laughs> and I, was, I had it all figured out I could make maybe 500 bucks. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, oh, if they want their phone number, I'm going to charge them $55. <laughs> <laughs> You're going for the big bucks. I was going for the big bucks. And anyway, the most everybody went for the $55 package. Mm -hmm. and, um, um, but what I'd actually done unintentionally was advertise myself to almost every business in Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. um, anybody who needed, if you needed a cartoonist, you knew who to go to. But um, what was very fortunate, there were uh, a couple gentlemen at Illinois College who um, recognized other abilities as well. And mm -hmm. they started calling uh, for me to do other types of commercial work for them. Right, right. Um, this is an example of, this is a painting done of the um, Paris Opera House. Mm -hmm. Very different style, of course, right. from the cartooning. But what is similar nice. is, um, I do love color, so. <laughs> right, yeah. um, You'll see that type of thing uh, is a piece I did for uh, Illinois College, they were opening a new coffee house on campus mm -hmm. and it was supposed to have a Starbucks feel. The students asked for some fun artwork. We had discussed hiring some artists out of Springfield actually to do the artwork, paint paintings of campus or something. And I ended up getting the commission. <laughs> so <laughs> again, have fine art hanging in the coffee house painting um, right. uh, on campus down there. But um, 
again reflects the fun, same fun style, but in a fine art, right? In a fine art way, right? Yeah. So then, where did it go from there? Well, you start going down that path of graphics and marketing, which is profitable. I mean, it's something businesses need. Um, but on the other end, um, well, where we are today, this is a company called Taylor and Coltis, based in uh, Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. um, I came in here one day with a friend. We were looking for some fabric for a project his wife was doing. And we were actually standing in about this very spot. And um, the owner of the company kind of knew of my work mm -hmm. uh, through her husband. And they called and said, would you be interested in designing products for us? Well, I didn't know what they were even talking about. Like, <laughs> like what do you mean what? products? Well, they made towels and quilts, uh, different things like that. Um, at the time, the company was doing strictly um, country crafts. Mm -hmm. um, so I came in and brought some uh, designs in, some drawings, and 20 plus years later, I'm still designing work for them. Well, um, and we're, here, here he is. This was the first guy that you did, right? Yeah, this was the very first um, drawing I did for the company. Um, at the time, it was in country colors, right. on a dusty blue, you know, that, that was the style at the time. He has stayed in the line for over 20 years. We just change his colors That's out every amazing. now and then. Yeah. Besides working and for Taylor and Coltis, Steve is involved with many Jacksonville businesses, organizations, and individuals. One such collaboration is an illustrated book with local playwright and author Ken Bradbury. Uh, he and I are friends, and he called one day about a year and a half ago and says, hey, I think we should do a book. <laughs> And at first I'm thinking he wants me to do the layout for a book he's doing. Well, it's not. He wanted me to do the illustrations. It was a, collab, a, collab, a collaboration between the two of us. And we uh, produced this book called The Place Where We Live. Um, and it's, it's a book about a town. Sounds an awful lot like Jacksonville when you read it, if you know Jacksonville. But you don't really ever specify that in the book. No, it's meant that you, wherever you are, you will recognize your own community. But if you're from Got Jacksonville, it. You really recognize yeah. your community. Yeah. Anyway, um, and then I provided the illustrations for the book. Uh, Ken did the writing, of course. Um, and uh, we had this released right before Christmas last year and have been selling it's copies. Very nice. Yeah. Um, it's a real fun project and nicely uh, produced in Jacksonville because we mm -hmm. have printing companies and a book bindery. Um, we're able to keep this is a truly locally produced product. Right. Yeah. I don't think it left a five mile radius. You know, that's that's where it came from. That's so. great. And then there is this little mural project oh, in yeah. downtown Jacksonville. Well if you live in Jacksonville, it's a small town, so you get involved <laughs> in lots of stuff. So <laughs> as an artist one day the the topic came up of all of our blank walls in Jacksonville. And I um, was on the committee because our committee met in a room that faced a blank wall in a parking lot. And it was, can we paint some murals on, on these walls? And um, everybody kept looking at me, and I kept telling them, well, I sunburn too much. I can't be outside <laughs> painting a mural all the time. Um, but I said, I could in the afternoon, after 12 noon, when the shadows you know, move <laughs> over. But they, um, after talking for a while, we discovered there was a group uh, that has become fairly well known in this area called the Wall Dogs, who paint murals. Um, they go around, they actually have these little parties, these painting parties over a weekend. Well, we arranged to uh, meet with them, and I became head of the committee, had a wonderful group I worked with, and we were able to produce seven murals for Jacksonville. So rather than just the one wall that we were staring at getting filled, we suddenly had seven projects in town um, that reflect the history of Jacksonville. So I worked with the artists on creating what the topics were, what these murals would look like. We had one mural that we had found a kind of an unknown history of Abraham Lincoln when he spoke on the square in downtown Jacksonville. The mural became... Uh, depicted that topic of Lincoln giving this speech, and uh, it was actually awarded as a Looking for Lincoln site now for um, the Looking for Lincoln Coalition. Very cool. Yeah, so that project, which started out very small as a single idea of me getting sunburned, <laughs> <laughs> just ballooned out into the, now we even have a registered Looking for Lincoln site. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, boom, it just boom, happened. Boom, it just happened, <laughs> yeah. You just, things like that just kind of happen, yeah. yeah. But if you're in the right place in the right time and know what you yeah. want, yeah, you can make Make stuff start so happening. if you are left to your own devices to do art in any way that you want, what is it that you enjoy doing? It was funny. Somebody asked me the other day, what do I do for fun, for art anymore? And I said, fun? <laughs> it's all <laughs> work. It's all work. <laughs> no, actually I do. Uh, if left to my own devices, you, you get cartoons. It's kind of what you get. Right. Um, it's, what I like is creating characters. I like mm -hmm. color and creating characters. And that's one of the things that goes through all the pieces 
even these crazy tiles that we create <laughs> that are made in China, it's all about creating fun characters. Right. And, um, and somehow I always put a personality into each each thing. I think that's what keeps my mind active. Mm -hmm. like, all these little characters have names and backstories yeah. <laughs> in my mind when I create them. So, um, including the turkey. So, do, you, do you have like a certain place that you go that provides inspiration for you? Is there something specific? Or one of the um, perks that I bring to a customer or to my own work is um, I'm just absorbing constant new ideas and I just keep filing them away and then it comes out later as something. Um, at either patterns, colors, textures. So there's always something rumbling around up there. Oh, there's um, I'm definitely most <laughs> people that have uh, more ideas than time. Uh, just <laughs> it's, um, Which is why I volunteer in a lot of different organizations mm -hmm. because um, Jacksonville's full of wonderful people who volunteer for different projects and we get lots of things done. Um, uh, the downtown renovation project, the Looking for Lincoln coalition uh, that I've served on that we've been accepted into, the mural project, um, just unlimited, so. Yeah. There's one front leg, there's his other front leg, there's his back leg, his tummy, back leg, hoof, hoof, Zebra hoof, has spots. Hoof. A zebra oh. has spots. Oh no, they don't. <laughs> what do they have? Nice. Cheese. They have a black tail and they have a black mane. And then the fun part. Stripes. How about that? Is that cool? So are the zebras black with white stripes or are they white with black stripes? White with black stripes. I think you're right. We'll make them smiling. That's all we have time for on this edition of State of the Arts. We'd like to thank Allison Pratt and Steve Varvel for sharing their stories and their talent with us today. Be sure and join us for the next State of the Arts. For all of us, I'm Becky Cramblett. This program is partially supported by a grant from the Illinois Arts Council Agency, a state agency. The National Endowment for the Arts. by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, and by viewers like you. Thank you.